So this year at 152 pounds, Colin Rath and Colin Guy, both men, Pennsylvania State Finals, and they put on an absolute show. They are both state champs from the previous year, and the year before that, they wrestled for third or fourth, Rath being the victor. They have wrestled each other many times since, Rath usually taking wins by a very small margin. Their ability to scramble through situations cannot be understated. This is a higher level than most college wrestlers, like 99% of them. And I'm not just saying that because they're both my wrestlers. Okay, okay, let's go back in time a little bit. Colin Rath and Colin Guy, have both recently gone to Stellar Train, so it's a common story on Flow that they're practice partners with Mar Stellar as a coach. What you may not know, though, is their understanding of each other goes way back beyond that. For five or six years before high school, I trained both of them. You can see it in their technique and the way they wrestle. They are Red Hawk wrestlers through and through. I took over Red Hawk back in 2014. I think it was a year later. Colin Guy was going to our practices here and there and had just won his first state championship. Colin Rath, who was more than a few weight classes lower, just got off the mat getting second at states. I remember that tournament pretty vividly. Guy won states because of a Merkel, which was his favorite move at the time. He was down by a bunch of points before he got it, and it won him the finals match, and then I worked with him for years afterwards to try to get him out of that habit, because trying to do a Merkel every single match is a really bad idea. He got a few seconds in the years after, but did eventually win states again before high school. I didn't know Rath that well yet, but him and my nephew Nathan Desmond were in the same weight class, if not one apart. I coached Nathan against him a few times, so I was already well aware of him. They would have super close matches. Rath was sick that weekend at States, but wrestled through States anyways, which is important to do, by the way. It's good practice for later when you may face that same situation at an important tournament and you don't have the choice. Rath ended up getting second at States that year. I coached Rath in the State Finals every single year from then on until high school. He got second a bunch of times, but when he broke through and finally started getting firsts, I was super happy for him. Anyways, that first year, in between matches, he was throwing up in the bathroom, and man, he showed so much toughness. I had to tell him how important it was that he went through all of that. I've said this before, you'd be surprised how well you can wrestle when your body is in survival mode. Rath is one of the toughest kids and hardest workers I've ever worked with. His mental toughness is insane. He would run through a brick wall if you told him to. Fast forward about a year, Guy and Rath were both at Red Hawk pretty regularly, and I started giving one-on-one -on -one private lessons to both of them. Over the next four or five years, I worked with both of them individually and in practice until they hit high school. I had just gotten out of college, so I had a lot of college information to offer the kids. I was good at scrambling, and I was good at leg riding. So both of these guys got five years of experience scrambling with me one-on-one -on -one for an hour every week. Not to mention I taught the entire room all of that stuff, so they all got good at it and spent an entire childhood with a level of scrambling that rivals most college wrestlers. People get pretty excited when they see eight-year-olds doing jonesies and successfully diving under for funk and whatnot. It's not that hard to teach beginners advanced techniques. Most coaches dumb things down way too much. Kids can handle way more than you think they can. From the crack down to the shin wizard to out the back door, offense and defense, how to transition between all three, how to turn one position into another to reset it a little bit and gain some more footing. On top of my already built up wealth of knowledge of scrambling, we identified problems and developed answers and strengthened those three main scrambling positions to the point where they are today. Guy was a lot closer to Tyler Kasak's weight, so he went with that bigger group of kids, and Rath was Nathan's partner for the bulk of the next few years. It wasn't until like 6th or 7th grade where Rath was big enough to go with Guy, but for sure they had plenty of workouts together and were both state champs at that point. With all the knowledge of how to scramble, it was always fun to watch them scrap. Fast forward three years, they're both in high school, both doing super well, as are a lot of the kids that used to come to Red Hawk, and they both find themselves in the finals of states. This had to be one of those, I'm not going a different weight, well, I'm not going a different weight either, well, I guess we're going to see each other in the finals, well, I guess so, kind of things. I'm pretty sure both of them would win states at a lower or higher weight class, but no, this one was for themselves, this one was for the fans. And scrap, they did. 15 seconds in, Guy grabs a righty collar tie, Wrath goes over tie. With this over tie, you have a lot of options. You can go to the inside elbow with your right, go hip to hip, face away, and do like a slide by. If your opponent reacts well, you can attack a far single, but not doing anything with an overtie is becoming a bigger and bigger issue these days because of what Guy does. He lifts the elbow up with his elbow, shoots a beautiful lefty high crotch. Guy tries to convert it to a single. We used to call that a knee pull single when you go from a high crotch to a single real quick, but Rath's already circling away, which allows him to step out of the shot mid-conversion. I want to say this is a lucky step out. Guy didn't have much control over the initial part of the shot. Rath correctly circles away from the shot, you're always supposed to circle away from whatever leg your opponent is shooting on. This helps stretch your opponent out and makes it difficult for them to keep a good grip. You keep your knees off the mat, throw your opposite hip down, lift in your ankle to break your opponent down, then you lift the far elbow to make them decide to let go. Top tier wrestlers have such a good grip and are very stubborn. You have to make them decide to let go of your leg. That's why attacking the wrist when they're on your leg doesn't get you very far. Wrath isn't able to get that far though. Guy is able to keep a piece of the knee and stabilize himself underneath Wrath and lift him up for an out to back door position. Here, Guy would 
be looking to isolate a leg, pull the foot down at the heel, step over, turk, keep his head up, push that top leg forward to pop his head out, then swim the inside arm out for a cross face to get the takedown. Wrath should be looking to lock hands around the body, hopefully trap an arm, go win Dixie or pop off to the trapped arm side to circle around for a go behind. Guy knows all of this though, so he keeps both arms up and so Wrath is limited to a chest wrap and looks for an ankle. You would use that ankle to try to funk if the situation falls on its side. As Guy advances to the Turk, Wrath knows he can't hang out there for very long. The situation will get very solid for Guy very quickly, so he lets go of everything, steps his free leg away, and starts kicking away a little bit. The kicking Wrath is doing is not meant to get him free, although if he does get lucky, it can, but it's more meant to keep his free leg away so Guy can't secure both legs and get a quick takedown. It's also meant to create a little bit of separation, some distance, so he can sneak in a shin whizzer if Guy starts to attack the far leg. It opens up the situation a little bit. Notice how Wrath circles towards the leg that Guy has control of. This keeps Wrath going in a circle, and so he's in bounds, so he's not vulnerable to giving up a flea in the mat call or a stall call. This also keeps his free leg farther away from Guy's reach. If you circle towards the leg that's free, your legs tend to float together, making it easier for someone to wrap both of them up. Wrath goes for a whizzer as Guy comes up with a leg. Very smart. A single leg is much easier to finish if you can turn it into a high single. When you're on the mat, you have to deal with all the shin whizzer shenanigans, not to mention everything else that goes along with scrambling. Guy immediately goes for a front trip, which is usually a good idea. When you lift a leg up to a high single, the earlier you go to trip, the better. You want to trip before your opponent gets a stable footing. The better trip to go for is the back trip. If you do a front trip, a savvy scrambler can use that trip against you. Use the forward momentum to dive under into a forward flip, aiming at the ankle for some funk, and that's exactly what Wrath does. Notice how he starts his roll underneath Guy and out away from him. You want to land as close to the ankle as you can, so it's harder for them to drop to a knee, catch a cross face, and get an easy takedown. Here we have a bit of a funk battle. The winner here is the one who's able to maintain height, keep control of the leg and or hips, and find their way to a cross face. Guy is in the ideal position. He should be looking to keep the leg he has and find his way to a navy ride with his left arm, which is when you hook underneath that far leg. That secures the hips, makes it so your opponent trying to funk, can't roll away from you, is forced to roll into you, and then you can convert to a low leg grip and find a cross face or maybe a low leg cradle if they're not being careful. Guy isn't looking for that though. Wrath holds position. Guy steps back over to come out the back door. You can look for a cross face cradle here if you're able to put enough forward pressure together, but Guy doesn't go for that either. Wrath kicks over the body, keeps the ankle, refunks, pushes the hip away with his top foot. This pushing the hip away extends the leg that you have control of and makes funk easier because they can't turn their hip down and bend their knee all wonky and get free or a potentially dangerous call. Then he starts trying to come up as well. Guy rolls back under and refunks again, finds himself in a low leg single position. Here you would try to pull your hips back a little bit, get your head in the knee, push it down to the mat, go to a tripod, circle to the double. Creating distance here is what you need to do, but Wrath keeps his leg straight, which puts pressure on the head and makes it difficult for a guy to come up. Then he grabs a crotch lock. Guy really should lift that right leg up, turn to the right, where he would reset things a little and find himself in another outside single position, where I imagine Wrath would try to kick away a little again and then look for the shin whizzer. Wrath could step over the near leg, dig his right arm under the body and grab his own foot and look to get a cradle with one arm and one leg. It's almost like a leg cradle, but he doesn't advance to it. You can also lift that near leg to a near side cradle like Sammy Sasso used to do. You make him do a forward flip and put him over to their back. Scrambling takes a lot of energy, so the mutual pausing here might just be because they're both getting a little tired. The scramble doesn't end with any points, but as you can see, they both know the ins and outs of every single scrambling position super well, and this is the result of that. Guy missed three opportunities and was on the attack for a lot of the scramble, and Wrath did a really good job of escaping out of situations to keep the scramble going, but he missed a few opportunities as well. Opportunities missed might just be because I haven't done private listens with them in a few years. You tend to forget things when you don't go over them. This is all the same stuff we went over for years and years. This is basically how it looked when I scrambled with these guys. I would try to keep the scramble going for as long as I could and I would give them opportunities to get the upper hand so they could get comfortable with all of the situations. This was a better scramble than any I saw at NCAAs in terms of both knowledge, understanding of the situations, and execution, and we're barely a minute into the match. The next scramble happens not long after. Guy takes the same shot, gets on the same leg, but this time is deeper and so Wrath isn't able to step out of it like he did before. Wrath should be looking for something to create a better position for him, but he doesn't go for it. He could dive over top and force Guy out the back door again. Out the back door defense is incredibly strong when you get good at it. Guy got so good at defending the out the back door position that he would score on me with it when he was in 8th grade. He could dig behind the shoulder, turn away, and force a shin whizzer. Or he could try to push the head to the outside and force a crackdown. When you're in a defensive situation like this, you need to attack it with confidence as if it's an offensive position. Wrath doesn't do that though. He kind of just hangs out, which I don't recommend. You do not want to sit around and wait for something to happen. Nothing good usually happens when you do that. Guy 
guy comes up to a high single, goes through on the pike, then reaches across for the far leg. Transitioning through finishes is very important. It makes it really tough to keep up. Wrath could forward roll here, kick the arm over top to create some funk, but he doesn't. Instead, Wrath reaches back for the wizard to stabilize. Guy comes up, then Wrath starts to kick away a little like he did before. This gets a little interesting. Wrath goes for a high crotch across the body. I seriously don't recommend you do this because Guy could quick change his grip for a near cradle, which he may or may not get, but it would force Wrath to let go of the leg and bail and would give Guy a good chance to get an easy takedown from here. If Wrath doesn't let go, he's getting cradled, but instead Guy starts coming up, Wrath does a forward roll, and then we're back into this funk battle. Keep the leg, maintain height, control the hips, find a cross face, but neither of them do. Period runs out, score is 0-0 after an incredible amount of action already. Second period, Wrath gets choice, chooses a down. Down is always a good choice when 0-0 on the second. If you get that escape, you get first score, and then you have choice in overtime. Guy is really good on top, but he elects to just cut Wrath at the start of the period, so the score is 1-0 Wrath. I assume he's weighing the cost of the amount of energy it'll take to ride Wrath out for the period, and whether or not it'll be worth it. There's no riding time in high school, so at best you're spending a lot of energy to save one point. Wrath is amazingly good at getting to his feet on bottom. He never gets tired, or at least he never shows it. So if you have a difficult time keeping him down, which pretty much everyone does, it might make sense to conserve your energy, let him go at the start of the period, and try to settle things in neutral. Guy has been the aggressor so far this match, the one taking the most shots. So that's momentum you should try to keep going. I gotta be honest, nothing really happens in the second period. Again, it takes a lot of energy to scramble, so this is a mutual understanding they both have currently. They're both more willing to let things get settled in the third period. Guy gets choice, chooses down, gotta get that point back to tie the score, which he does. He's able to get to his feet, post the hands, and get his one. Score is tied now, 1-1. One, one. Ten seconds into the first, Guy has a tight lefty collar tie, and outside control on the right. He keeps it tight, looks away, goes hip to hip, and pulls the elbow through for a slide by. This is similar to the slide by that we saw Jax Forrest do to Tomasello. I started doing this at one point with Tyler Kasak in our lessons, who got really good at this too, by the way. Then I started teaching it to everyone else. I think it was Cade Brock who I saw do it from Oklahoma State. He did it a bunch back then, and so I started playing around with the idea. You can do it in this situation or when your opponent has a collar tie and puts too much pressure into you. You can go quick collar tie, grab the elbow, look away, and pull it through. It's also really good if you have that outside elbow and someone tries to go to a high crotch. You can down block real quick, then grab the head and pull it through. It's just super slick overall, and it's difficult to feel coming, which is why it works so well. It's different from the Easton Shrug, where you hook over top of the arm and you grab the tricep in the way that it doesn't keep you stuck in that position. It's a lot less visible if you're going to try it, and you can go to a pass by or an elbow pop if you're not feeling the pressure you want. So you have a lot of other options at the same time. That right elbow is so vulnerable, having outside control there is so strong if you know how to use all of the options. If your coach is telling you inside control is what you always need, he's sorely mistaken and stuck in the past. Honestly, outside control tends to give you more options. Guy gets around behind, but Wrath immediately does a Gramby roll, which Guy tries to roll with, but just isn't able to get ahead of it. As Guy feels the pressure start to go under, he has to get both feet off the mat, get his knees on either side of Wrath's hips, tuck his head a little so he doesn't face plant, and just float with the roll. But Wrath is half a second ahead, so he's able to get his hips out of Guy's control, keep the leg elevated, and get his takedown. This happened so quick during the match that I didn't really understand what he did until I slowed it down and watched it later. It's just a basic Gramby roll. I thought it was something else, but it just happened to work super well for Wrath at this point. I've mentioned Wrath in this regard in other videos. If someone gets around behind you and you're not taken down yet, you still have a chance to separate hands and not give up anything, or go for a random roll to create some chaos and hopefully you find yourself into a scramble again, or you could go for a quick switch there as well. Wrath does such a good job reacting to the situation time and time again. Score is 3-1 Wrath. Guy works his way to his feet, gets another escape, score is 3-2 Wrath. 40 seconds left, Guy fakes a lefty single, then attacks that same lefty high crotch. Elevates it to out the back door again. Wrath gets a piece of the ankle with a crotch lock. Guy doesn't try to go to a Turk position this time, instead locks his hands up and falls to the side, keeps his hips up, and pops his head out. But Wrath keeps that far ankle, pushes his hips in, which forces Guy to his butt, and then to his side. Guy honestly should have went back to that Turk position again, but I'm guessing he's either tired or he's trying something different. Wrath should be looking for a cross face here, but instead he's focusing on the low leg, trying to get to a Turk. You actually don't need a Turk at this point. A quick cross face will secure the position enough for a takedown, but he goes for it anyways. Guy gets his hips up, has a leg in, and almost spins around for the takedown, but Wrath starts going for a quick switch. Guy needs to get a cross face here to pull Wrath down and solidify the takedown, but he really isn't going for it. Even after he laces the leg in and puts hip pressure, which Wrath uses to roll Guy and keeps the scramble going. The situation keeps going, and unfortunately for Guy, his leg slips out, which allows Wrath to free his hips and turn a situation where Guy was 99% at the takedown into nothing again because they're both facing opposite directions. When you get a leg in, it's important that you secure that leg by doing either like a figure four 
or at least locking your ankles up. They are both familiar with leg riding and this switch re-switch battle, so I'm surprised neither of them are able to get that cross face quickly. Wrath holds on as the clock winds down for the 3-2 victory. Initially, when I watched this match at normal speed, I felt like Guy should have gotten the takedown at the end, but watching it now, I can see the ref did a good job of holding the points. A basic cross face does such a good job of stopping scrambles and securing takedowns, and I think that's what Guy was missing a little here. He got himself into so many situations, and yet Wrath was able to scramble out of them time and time again to find the victory. I think Wrath didn't shoot as much as he should, which I can kind of understand because Guy, like Wrath, is so good at scrambling defensively that getting into a bad shot because you forced it and didn't set it up correctly will get you taken down. But still, you have to be attacking anyways. This was a crazy match for sure, and they are both so incredibly good at scrambling, but you can also see there are a ton of opportunities that they still missed along the way. A ton of ways that they could have stopped the scrambles dead and secured the takedown. For me, it was really cool knowing that either way, one of them would be a state champ again, so I wasn't really rooting for anyone in particular, but it was cool to see all those crazy positions play out. Easter egg time. This punching of the mat Colin Rath does, by the way, he's been doing that after matches ever since he was super little. I remember one match, he punched the mat in the same exact way, and a ref gave a team point away because he thought Colin punched the other kid out of the corner of his eye. Funny little story. We were all like, what are you talking about? He hit the mat. The ref waved the point after a little discussion, but still, it made me laugh seeing that.